Good afternoon. Um, my name is Mr Chapman. I'm the acting head of Sixth Form and this is a presentation that normally we would do with you live in the hall as part of the welcome evening. But unfortunately, because of the COVID restrictions, I'm having to deliver this virtually. Uh, this short video gives you an introduction to something that we have given out to the Year 12 students this afternoon, which is their Alps target grades. The purpose of the presentation is to try and help you understand how those target grades are calculated, why we use them, and then to think a little bit about how we can support the students here to make sure that they're going beyond their target grades to achieve the very best that they can. So ALPS sets minimum expected grades, otherwise known as MEGs, for students based on the performance of the top 25% of schools and departments in the Department for Education's national data set. That's to say that the expected grades that we give to students are calculated on the performance in the top 25% of schools, i.e. they are very aspirational. At a school level, the advantage of this is the ALPS reports that we subsequently get will allow us to compare how students doing biology at Mill Hill County are progressing against students doing biology at other schools. It creates a really robust measure, which encourages us to make sure that we're providing the best quality of education for our A-level students. The minimum expected grade at A-level is based on the GCSE average point score, otherwise known as APS, of the student. And this then acts as a guide, but it should be, very clear here, treated as a minimum target grade. We want, we expect, we hope many of our students to go beyond the minimum target grade. The way those ALPS megs are set is by looking at the A-level performance of previous students who have had the same average GCSE point score. And I'm going to give you an example now to try and explain how that process works. If we pretend that this is the result of a fictional student, we can see that they performed pretty well. They've got an eight in maths, an eight in dance, achieved sevens in both Englishes, sevens in history and business studies, combined science of seven, six, and performed slightly less well in geography and French, although they've still passed with a very creditable five. When you add up all of their GCSEs, their total score is 67. You then divide that by the number of GCSEs they've taken to get an average point score of 6.7. We then use that average GCSE point score to calculate their minimum expected grade. So, the A-level performance of previous students who have the same average GCSE point score is the basis for setting the ALPS grade, the MEGS. So in this case, we've called our student Alicia and she's got that average GCSE score of 6.7. Alicia's therefore put into a band of all those students nationally who had an average GCSE score of between 6.55 and 7. Now, last year, there were 18,079 students with or within that band. And of those 18,079 students, those at schools which were in the top 25% scored 101.33 points per subject. And the points per subject there is a numerical calculation which translates the A-level grade, A star, A, B, C, into a numerical value. That 101.33 points per subject is the equivalent of a B grade. So students in Alicia's band with a GCSE average point score of between 6.55 and 7, in the top 25% of those students, they achieved on average a B. And that makes Alicia's minimum expected target grade a B. So the ALPS MEGs will vary based on the GCSE average point score. And the table you can see on the screen at the moment shows that. Carrie's got a GCSE average point score of 7.9. So her ALPS is an A star. Alicia's, as we discussed, has got uh, a GCSE average point score of 6.7. So the minimum expected points we would expect from her are 101.33. So her ALPS MEG is a B. Mark's got a GCSE average point score of 4.8. That places him halfway down the bands in the band between 4.77 and 5.21. His minimum expected score is 79, and that equates to an ALPS minimum expected grade of a C. 
So the Alps minimum expected grades that students have received today have been based on their GCSE average point score. That places them in a band, which then looks at how students in previous years with the same GCSE average point score have achieved. We've focused on the top 25% of those students said, well, what on average did they achieve? And that's how we have calculated the minimum expected grades for the students here. As a school, we're really clear that focusing on the top 25% is a natural fit for us. We don't want our students to just be achieving what the average student achieves. We want them to be keeping pace with those students who are achieving the best results in the country. The other reason why these are minimum expected grades and not, for example, target grades is that the GCSE average point score may not reveal a particular ability or skill within a certain subject. So you might have a student with a GCSE average point score of a 6.2, but they achieved a nine in GCSE history and they're taking history at A-level. We would therefore expect them to exceed their minimum expected grade, which is why we call it a minimum expected grade and not a target grade. To give you some context, last year there were 560 A-level examinations that were awarded. 185 grades were higher than the minimum expected Alps grade. 224 were in line with expectation and 151 grades were lower. We very much hope this year with all the support that we are giving students that we will see a significant increase in the number who are above expectation and or who are in line with expectation. We'll be using these minimum expected grades to have conversations with students in the coming weeks both with form tutors, subject tutors and heads of year. The idea is that students will be reminded of what's expected of them and where they are currently not reaching that standard, we can be discussing what they need to do in addition to make sure that they are getting to that minimum expected grade. If you have any questions about this process or about how these grades have been calculated, please don't hesitate to be in touch with me, um, but we're very much looking forward to working with you and with the students over the next 18 months so that they can achieve their potential. We know that this group of students can achieve great things and we just need to make sure that they are supported and focused to do so. Um, I'm very sorry we couldn't do this in person, but I hope this has nevertheless been useful and we look forward in the future to seeing you back on site soon. Thank you.